after a torrid few weeks, raw materials right across the board are showing strength. You can see the commodities up, even though stocks are lower today. Well, my next guest is involved in the business of buying and selling such commodities. For more, let's talk to Michael John Lytle. He's managing director at Source, which issues exchange-traded funds. Good to see you, MJ. So just take us through exactly what you're doing here. Well, Source is a provider of exchange-traded products, which include exchange-traded funds and others, as well as exchange-traded commodities. Okay, so ETFs is, is a way that you could invest in a commodity. Just explain how that works. Well, effectively, an ETF is an index investment, which gives a pass-through investment into the underlying exposure. And so in the case of commodities, what we do is they're called exchange-traded commodities, and it's a pass-through into exposure to the commodities markets. So I want to exchange, I want, I want to speculate that copper is going to rise, so right. I invest in, it, in an ETF. They've become much more, much more important, haven't they, in the overall market, in moving the markets, haven't they? Well, they have, and they've seen massive inflows. Um, we've seen uh, the use of ETFs for multiple purposes, both for long-term investment and for short-term uh, market moves. And is that set to continue? We think so. We've seen a lot of interest. There's a growing footprint for ETFs. Uh, at this point, they represent about 3% of uh, assets in the asset management industry in Europe, but that's growing pretty rapidly. In the U.S., it's gotten over 7%. Still pretty small uh, overall. But, I mean, what's the most popular? Is it gold? Well, in the commodity space, gold definitely. Precious metals have seen uh, almost 90% of the inflows into the commodity space in this year. And, and just tell us just specifically how it works with regard to gold. So the fund invests in the actual stuff. Yeah, well, gold is actually very easy because precious metals uh, are an inert uh, commodity, and so you can actually own them and hold them on behalf of the investors. Um, so you actually put gold away in a vault uh, for the benefit of the investors. Now, do you forecast where you think gold's going to go? We don't. You don't No, do but that. we are a partnership uh, with Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, Namura, and J.P. Morgan. So they obviously have they views. They provide that research and their views. Okay. And there's a pretty so, strong view across the banks that gold is heading for over 2,000 this year. Really? Yeah. Even, even, even with the uh, current drop? Back yes, down but, but I think what we've seen with gold is an interesting dynamic where it's both a financial investment and a commodity. So on the one side, you have people investing in gold because of its um, safe haven status. But on the other, it is a commodity with supply-demand constraints. And so when you bring large financial flows into a commodity like that, uh, it has a positive impact on them. Now, one of the big issues in this space, in this ETF space right now, is the regulatory environment. There, there are... There's, there are calls, even from the biggest issuers of ETFs, mm -hmm. BlackRock, yes. to, to regulate it more heavily. Well, I think um, ETFs themselves are quite heavily regulated because they're uh, usage funds. Um, but the products other than ETFs, which in the commodity space, most of the products are ETPs. They're actually securities rather than funds. Okay. Um, there needs to be, in some cases, more understanding of how those function. More transparency, More really. transparency, yeah. Okay. We'll leave it there. MJ Lito, Managing Director and Founding Partner of Source. Thanks very much. Pleasure.